Now, I know you're excited to learn Python, and we are so tempted to just run up and get Python installed and start coding. But before we do that, let's just cover some key terms that you really should know. Not just according to our entry-level Python programming exam objectives for the exam that we're studying for, but I think it's a really good idea that we know some of these key terms. The first thing that I want to discuss with you is this whole concept of a programming language. You see, there's lots of different language types out there. For example, we speak in what we call natural language. Here's an example of two folks speaking in Spanish. So they're going to be using this natural language to communicate with each other, and that natural language is going to evolve over time and change over time. If you look at the English language, uh, we have the new word skibbity. Sure. So these natural languages are going to evolve over time. And guess what? That's going to be the same with our programming languages. Now, a natural language is so easy for us when it is our native natural language. But the polar opposite of a natural language for us would be a machine language. Yeah, this is a language that a computer is going to understand and speak. And here we can see an example of hexadecimal machine language, and that doesn't seem very friendly at all. No, that is not friendly at all. In fact, suddenly I remember a great scene from the excellent television series Halt and Catch Fire, where two of the engineers there are reverse engineering code and they are starting with the machine language. Yeah, so this is not friendly at all. So what we want is we want something like Python. Yeah, we want a programming language, and we specifically call that a high-level programming language. And it is almost just like our natural language. Yeah, if we look at this Python 3 example, we can see that we want to print Hello World. And sure enough, that's what will happen. On the screen, we will have Hello World printed, high-level programming language that is so easy to understand and so similar to the natural language that we use every single day. We are going to be studying the high-level programming language of Python 3. Notice it is Python 3, not Python 2. Python 2 is an incompatible previous version of Python that we will not be learning in this course. Now, something else that we need to understand from a key term standpoint here is the term Lexis. What exactly is a Lexis? Well, it is the vocabulary of a language. So we had Spanish as a natural language in this example, and a key piece of vocabulary there we saw was hablar, the verb to speak, hablar. So, and forgive my pronunciation, by the way, but anyways, yeah, a lexis is just that. It's the vocabulary that a language is going to use, and we're going to see keywords and mathematical operators and string indications and all this rich vocabulary that we have inside of Python 3. Yeah, this is called our Lexis, and it's what we're going to be working with. Something else, of course, a language is going to have is syntax. Yeah, this is the structure that we must follow. On the top example here is Python 2. Yeah, in Python 2 code, we would say print, and then we would put in single or double quotes, hello world as an example. That would work fine in the syntax of Python 2. But sure enough, below it, 
I give you an example of Python 3 syntax. Notice with Python 3, we need to have uh, opening and closing parens around the string we want to print in addition to the double or single quotes. So print and then open paren, quote, hello world, close that quote, close that paren, and there is your Python 3 syntax for printing. Now think about it, a language is also gonna have semantics. Yeah, this is really giving us the meaning of our code. So, for example, in Python, if we say x equals 10 plus 5, the semantic meaning of arranging the characters and letters in this manner is going to mean that we are creating a variable x and we are setting that variable equal to 10 plus 5. So we're going to have different semantics that we will study together inside of Python that actually gives meaning to our code and allows the program to accomplish wonderful things for us. Now, something else that I need you to realize in this section of our course is that there are two basic categorizations of programming languages. In fact, there's many different ways to categorize our programming languages, but one of the ways we can categorize them is, is the programming language one that needs to be compiled or is it one that needs to be interpreted? Let's take a look at this. A classic example of a programming language that needs to be compiled is C++. So what happens is the coder sits down and writes their C++ code, and then this code needs to be compiled into an executable file that is then delivered to the end users. Wow, interesting. Notice this is very different from code that is interpreted. And sure enough, Python is code that is interpreted. It needs an interpreter in order to run it. So we have our Python language, we have our syntax and our semantics, we use the print command, and the interpreter goes ahead and runs this language and does on our computer what we need it to do. So C++, great example of a compiled programming language. And then of course we have our interpreted language and that would be Python as a great example of that. So immediately we might think, well, wait a minute, there must be advantages and disadvantages to these approaches. Well, sure. Compiled programming languages, they typically will run faster. That's right, they'll typically run faster. And the end user only needs the end result of the compilation. So if we're compiling into an exe file for Windows, for example, that's all the end user is going to need. And another nice feature of compiled language is it it is stored as machine language. So if you've got all kinds of nifty little tricks and secrets that you've got inside of your code, it's gonna be much tougher for someone to look at your high level code. Yeah, they're only gonna see machine language and they'd have to do a tremendous amount of reverse engineering to actually see your code. Now compiled languages like C++ certainly have their disadvantages, like the amount of time you'll spend compiling them. Yeah, think about making changes to your code. Oh my gosh, we, we write the code, we compile, we test, and then we realize, oh, we gotta make some changes. We make those changes, we have to compile again and then test again. And there's probably more changes we have to make. So more compiling has to be done. 
The other challenge with our compiled languages is we have to compile for each hardware platform we need to support. Yikes! So, we might be compiling our code many different times for many different platforms. An interpreted environment, like Python's environment, is certainly going to have its advantages and one that we absolutely love, and you'll see it in the very next video, is we can run our code immediately. Yeah, we don't have to pause for the compilation of the code. And we can write once for many different hardware platforms. Now, Python and other interpreted programming languages certainly have their disadvantages. We already mentioned they're not going to be as fast when they execute typically, and they are stored as the high-level language, so someone can easily be very, you know, eavesdroppy. They can be very, um, they can scrutinize our code. Yeah, they can easily look at our code and see what our code is doing. And I suppose it's a disadvantage that everyone needs an interpreter. Yeah, when we're writing our code, we need an interpreter. When we ship our code out to the end users, they need the interpreter. The great news is the Python 3 interpreter is totally free and is even pre-installed on many operating system environments. So, a lot of times these disadvantages, of course, they're going to be very easy for us to overcome. Well, now that we've gotten some of these key terms out of the way, I'm sure you're excited, just as I am, to go out there and get Python and execute your first Python program. Let's get to that in the very next video. I'll see you there.